Hey, this is Nick Lee from Moontooth, and you're listening to the Vulgar Display of Podcasts. Welcome back to the Vulgar Display of Podcasts. We are joined over the phone right now by a very special guest, Nick Lee from Moontooth. How's it going, Nick? Hey, man. Good. How are you guys? We're doing good. Great. Yeah, things are great. We haven't stopped rocking your new stuff that you guys have been releasing. Yeah, man. Thanks. Yeah, we got four four singles so far out from the new record, which drops in, I guess, like two weeks, week and a half, something like that. Can't come soon enough. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think we, we reached out maybe... Maybe one of our early episodes where we talked about some bands that we were into that are, I would say, newer or uh, definitely active and relevant. You guys' name came up. We are fans. Uh, been rocking, you know, your older stuff and really excited for this new album coming out May 13th, a couple weeks from now. So this time frame to where the album's not out yet, are you just like so ready to have it out and let everybody hear it? Or are you nervous? Or what's that feeling like for you guys? Oh, yeah, we're just, you know, between... uh pandemic and just how long things take in general and vinyl turnaround time i mean we've been sitting on some of these songs for a long time so we're just like very ready for it to be out oh i'm sure um, yeah definitely was nervous a bit before the first couple songs came out but um you know the more that it comes out the the more that nerves kind of subside it becomes more like you don't have a choice anymore yeah. <laughs> so you just kind of you stop second guessing everything you know you just kind of like get excited again you know Right, like it's out there now, there's no turning back. Yeah, it becomes everyone else's problem. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So will you guys actually be out on the road when the album drops? Yeah, thankfully uh, we'll be out with Dance Gavin Dance. Yeah, you guys are on a killer tour right now that's actually starting tomorrow, is that right? Yeah, well, we've been out for a week routing out to, uh, well, we routed out to California to do Swan Fest, which is Dance Gavin Dance's festival in Sacramento. Uh, we did four shows on the way out, and then we played... Portland by ourselves last night, Seattle tonight, and then, yeah, tomorrow starts the actual tour with Dance Gavin Dance. Everything else has just been, you know, to get out here. Nice. With our podcast, with the Vulgar Display of Podcasts, what we're kind of known for doing is uh, picking some of our top three songs or drummers, or and that's kind of, I think, even how you guys were mentioned on one or two of our past episodes. So if you're okay with it, we've picked a couple songs, and we're going to play a little bit, and then uh, maybe ask you a few questions about it, if you're okay with that. Yeah, totally. Okay. Dale, you want to talk about your gears? Yes, to say that I am absolutely in love with The Conduit. Sweet. Yeah, that, thanks, man. That song, uh, uh, actually, Ray, our drummer, wrote the lion's share of uh, the uh, riffs in that song. I read another article that he just laid down the whole song. Yeah, it had everything but the bridge and the vocals. I, um, and once the, uh, once the vocals started going, the... I got the bridge together, but uh, yeah, that was all like Ray's song that he really sculpted around um, this pedal, the Zvex Fuzz Factory, which just has this really, just totally fucked, uh, <laughs> just gated, awful, like noisy fuzz, but it just sounds super heavy. And um, uh, he was just, the original demo he did was just that thing through a DI, and it just sounded so weird, heavy. So it was kind of just built around that guitar sound. I was going to ask you about that because it actually sounds like there's an octave pedal on it or there's like four layered tracks on it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think the whole thing has, yeah, like uh, the fuzz factory and then with and then an octave down doing the same thing. We probably just used the pitchfork for, but uh, yeah, I don't even remember. There's a lot of guitars on that song. <laughs> it just it, And the reason I ask is it just sounds huge. Yeah, it does. And I love the choppy intro, that meh, meh, meh. I love it. It drew me right in. I love it. Well done. Yeah, we hadn't really done a song that was a real glitchy fuzz like that, so it was, it was fun to do. I mean, we definitely like a lot of, like, kind of weirdo stonery, stoner rock stuff and yeah, that kind of fuzz, you know, fuzzy hard rock stuff that, uh, you know, we, we've touched on before, but that song kind of, like, we were going for more of like Queens of the Stone Age, or the, there's a band called the, the Netherlands from Brooklyn who are really sick, and their okay. guitar player Timo is like a master at just the, the, you know, a lot of, it almost sounds like a, 
like synth. It's a super heavy, fuzzy guitar kind of thing. What I really love about you guys is, and I, I even love your Instagram handle. It's Moon Tooth Shreds, right? Yes. Like that you are totally oh, yeah. ripping on guitar, but it's just all these like super melodic singing over the top of it and hooks. So it's mm -hmm. real catchy, but it's real shreddy too. Thanks, man. Yeah. I mean, um, we had just always had like kind of a, me and uh, Ray, are, our drummer, have been playing together since we were young, like 13. So we always kind of had like a healthy competition going of like who could come <laughs> up with the crazier thing. And we love like, uh, kind of grew up on Van Halen and Pantera and things that yeah. were, you know, of that nice. nature where everything, mm -hmm. everybody's kind of, you know, working. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> like taking it easy. Everybody's got to like play some hard riffs, yeah. have some chops, but you know, but still have songs. Most sure. importantly is the songs. So my pick, the guys always give me hell because I can't pick one. <laughs> the The song that really, I think, uh, was one of the first ones I heard from you guys is All at All Angles. And, you know, I want to talk about a riffy but super catchy song. And I think there's, at least on Spotify anyway, it's your most downloaded or streamed song. Would you say that's one of your most popular songs? Oh, definitely. A lot of our songs take, you know, pop chord progressions, and I use that as the bed to write riffs. You know, um, kind of learned early on that our singer John does really well with that kind of thing. You know, he just can write much more rich melodies and catchy things. You know, when we when we when we do like real thrashy tech death you know, tech metal stuff, you know, that kinda leaves him with less options melodically, you know, there's like less room for him to to fit things in. But yeah, that's definitely that's usually the uh if not the closer, like the song before the last song. Yeah. Oh, nice, solid. And then the other one I picked was Carry Me Home. And I love, I love this blue amp version that you guys put out. Yeah, the, um, so we had done an acoustic P of some of the songs off of Crux. And we did like an acoustic live session during the pandemic, like quarantine, and we couldn't play shows. And we wanted to do an acoustic thing for a long time. And then Pure Noise Records got behind it and we're stoked about it. And then so when th this record came out, an idea to just help promote the new songs and just do something fun was to do alternate versions of a few. Mm -hmm. So we did an acoustic version of uh, Nymphy AC and then... That's um, how you say it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's right I've been trying for months. <laughs> and we're getting pretty good at titles that people don't know how to say. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and then uh, for this one, we were just like kind of real burnt on doing acoustic stuff. And when I wrote the song, I was trying to do like Hendrix and Almonds and Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of like style riffing nice. and that's so like when the alternate version idea was coming around it was like well why don't we just do it you know full on kind of ZZ Top Southern yeah. Rock kind of thing and uh, yeah it was just really fun and we just called it Blue Amp Version because that's an amp that Ray uh, built in this studio it's like an old it's supposed to be like an old school Marshall Plexi oh cool um, nice and we ran it through like a Fender 215, like Stevie Ray Vaughan, you, see, you know, we we're just trying to go for that sound as, as best as we could do and make something a little looser. It was just for fun, you know, I mean, there were moments where we were like, should we do this? Is this going to be really confusing for people? But I think that, you know, we just kind of trusted, like, people get it, that it's just, just kind of an experiment. Yeah. And just kind of seeing if the songs, like with the acoustic stuff, like if the songs could kind of hold their own, you know, without the, without the fucking heavy guitar sounds and stuff like that. And big crazy sounding drums like make sure that they could kind of there's a, still a song there when you strip all that away i think you guys nailed it i mean to me and i love the guitar tone on that it sounds like a tube amp that's really warmed up and kind of being pushed to the max there and then on anthony's list is alpha how i cannot get enough of that song right now and that video is absolutely crazy <laughs> goodfellas theme right you guys kind of mirrored that a few scenes from there yeah yeah we uh we had like this very serious idea for a music video that everybody was kind of like ho hum about and like, like yeah, it, it, this is cool, I think. And then we, you know, we had a bunch of beers one night and we're just kind of like <laughs> riffing and like that idea was just the funniest idea. And then the more that we could, you know, we started thinking about Ray's partner at his studio that he owns, Anthony, played like my mother in the video and it just, <laughs> just became funnier as we went on. And, you know, we're like, you know, four Italian Americans from Long Island. So, you know, it was just kind of like, it was real on the nose, kind of just make, making a joke about ourselves because 
we get that joke all the time when people are like, you got a Carbone and a Romanelli. Oh, <laughs> Might as well just be the good fellas. Huh? Yeah, it was funny. I saw, uh, I think it was uh, your your Instagram or your Facebook page or something posted it, but there was actually like a side-by-side comparison of some of the scenes, and it was like, yep, that's spot on. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. you guys put in the Very work cool. to kind of nail some of those scenes. That I'm guessing yeah. that took a little bit. Kind of, yeah. I mean, I've seen that movie so many times that like it was sure. actually not that hard. I'm not, like, I, uh, whenever I have to act in the video, uh, it always just feels super fucking awkward and weird. But that one was like pretty easy, just to pretend to be Joe Pesci. Right. Uh, <laughs> Probably been quoting it for years like, and years. Not really huh? the dialogue, but yeah. Uh, the yeah. I mean, uh, Tom Flynn is. I think that was like number, you know, maybe number nine or number ten for music videos he's done for us. And uh, he's uh, he was like just really on the ball. Like he just kept checking, you know, the footage on his phone to make sure that his uh, his angles were like perfect. And you know, we were just con- you know constantly kind of checking as we went to make sure like our faces were similar and stuff but um yeah we shot it in like i don't know probably about eight hours or something like that but a few different locations we had a tom had rented a cadillac from somebody which we lucked out with (laughs) it was like a i think in 1981 early 80s cadillac that only had like 12,000 miles on it so the guy was like you know the guy was like you know, where are you taking this thing and what are you doing with it and he was a little, a little nervous but it's been sitting in really some cool. garage yeah somewhere. right for years right probably just comes out for car shows and stuff <laughs> i'm sure yeah but uh yeah yeah so that that we just kind of looked at it was really fun to do and we definitely had a moment of being like people gonna get this at all but uh it ended right. up working out sure you know i think the, the funny videos are usually the ones that people want to come back to and you know More drawn. something to talk about yeah drawn yeah. to them I heard something you said in an interview recently that really stuck out to me. You said, you know, with all the band thing and the touring and making music, you just want the band and that whole experience to be basically want to take life experiences away from it. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it became clear pretty early on that like, you know, if we were going to stick to just making the kind of like, uh, you know, like to us, we're making, you know, catchy rock songs, but you know, to the rest of the world, it seems like there's, you know, it's a little confusing for people and i get it like it doesn't fit really in what's popular right now and it kind of just became clear like okay this is not going to be necessarily like overnight you know fucking madison square garden fucking making hundreds of thousands of dollars per gig you know it's like we were you know it's like we're this is going to be a long road and and that's you know that just is okay with me because it's like it's fun and the four of us have been friends a really long time and get along really well um you know i hope we all hope that uh one day this is all we have to do you know, sure. to survive but at the same time it's like getting paid in life experience is is worth it and mm-hmm. uh there's just something to, about like um keeping keeping like things uh moving forward and keeping momentum and like that's really important like sometimes it's like uncomfortable to take a, a step in a direction that's better for the future for the band but it's like always worth it to just you know just keep changing it up, you know, working with a different right. producer or just taking a chance on a tour that maybe we don't necessarily fit on, things like that, where it's like uh, just keeping it interesting and exciting keeps everybody stoked, where it's like if we just kept doing the same things over and over again and, you, like you know, together and no become, to, yeah, everything's the same day and boring. Yeah, it's kind of like just saying yes to everything just mm-hmm. to see, because even if it's <laughs> yeah. not a great experience, it'll add, you know. It'll be character. for a good story anyway. Yeah, character, exactly just like kind of learn a lesson from it and you guys did change up your recording process on this one right yes and no i'm uh we worked with uh josh wilbur as a producer um and we had gotten his contact through mark morton from lamb of god who worked on our previous record crux and uh yeah he just mark told us that he was interested and he has like a pretty serious resume yeah, you know, like how, Lamb, uh, how, obviously, and Go- how uh, good does that feel to say? Yeah, just Mark Morton from Lamb of God. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, I know it's still weird for me too. Yeah. Uh, but um, but yeah, it was just kind of like we did work with Mark and Machine, who was we also knew through you know working from working uh, on Lamb of God records sure. and Clutch records and mm-hmm. Every, uh, so, everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like a similar thing kind of happened with that where he, he was kind of out of the blue and we were like, well, we can't, you know, even debate that this is a good idea. You know, up until that point, we had just done everything ourselves. Ray, our drummer, had, has produced and mixed and engineered all of our records at his studio, which is called Westfall Recording Company. But yeah, what, what happened with that is that we had started pre-production and then 
logistics and the label that we were talking to at the time and money at the time and just didn't work out. So machine didn't get to actually track or mix any of it. We just did pre-production for Crux. And then this time around, we got another step further towards working with somebody and that we, he did end up tracking vocals and mixing it. But uh, we did all of the instrumentals at Ray Studio. We did okay. you know, guitar, bass, and drums. Some of the vocals, most of that was done in California with Josh Wilbur. But yeah, I mean, the, the main difference is that Josh mixed it pretty much. And that's was a big kind of, I don't know, like a step, again, like a little uncomfortable because it's like that's what Ray does for a living. And that's, that's he prides himself on his mixes, which are, which are killer. But it's like, you know, why not? try something different and just see sure. see what happens you know I, we're, we're not like you know we have another record or two ready to go right now if we really wanted to buckle down and do it so just see yeah. like an exciting you know it just made things you know a little bit more interesting and exciting because there's always that fear of like well what if it gets fucked up <laughs> but yeah right right obviously take that but leap no, we're really we're really stoked on on uh what josh did with it and when we work with machine and mark and then working with josh you just learn you just learn things you know you just get that you get kind of paid and experience and knowledge go forward with that, you know, kind of just knowing what that's like and you're just getting people's perspective. And, you know, you could be definitely in your own little insular bubble when you're just like the four dudes in the band talking about everything, you know, and kind of lose perspective really quick when you're just constantly just the four of you working on the thing together. So when somebody comes in and kind of goes like, Hey, this could be better. It's fun to go, Oh, well, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can come up with something better. <laughs> And then you right. do, and it's like, all right, cool. You know, yeah. Okay, riff, that this works. This riff is more right. exciting now. You were right. Yeah. And then sometimes you're like, no, nah, we're good, you know. But <laughs> for the most we'll part, it. you know, we we took their ideas and put them through our filter, and you know, then you have the record. But the songs don't they don't change their their shape as much. It's just like introducing just exciting possibilities here and there, you know. So, um, you know, you brought up Machine. I, I had read that he actually saw you guys on tour with uh, Fit for an Autopsy and reached out personally and wanted to work with you. Yeah, we were on that tour in 2017 uh, with Fit for an Autopsy and Tombs. And Pat from Fit was like, hey, M Machine wants to talk to you, you know, about doing your next record. And I thought he was fucking with me at first. <laughs> um, You're like, shut up. He, like, <laughs> he linked us up and we talked on the phone and he was just really stoked on it. Actually, um, the guy, his name is Julian, who works underneath Machine at the Machine Shop in Austin. We were buddies. He, we played with his band chrono Chronologist in Boston and just stayed friends. So I think he turned him on to us. And then the, he got in contact with us through Will Putney and then through Fit for an Autopsy. And so, yeah, that was a trippy phone call. Sure. But uh, yeah. we got along really well. You know, like he was, he's real intense, uh, very uh, animated and very, uh, you know, very like he has a lot of energy behind what he does and his mm -hmm. ideas. So it can be um, intense at first to to talk to him about stuff. But yeah, and then uh, he did come to the last show at a uh, knitting factory in Brooklyn on that fit for an autopsy tour, and that's where we actually met in person. Wow, oh, yeah, awesome. So some of these tours you're you've been on tour with and you are on tour with like heavier bands, and maybe some of the crowds haven't heard you or, or your style. Are you finding that they're pretty receptive to what you guys do? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think that we bring a lot of energy live. So even if it's not your thing, you know, you can you, you still have a good time watching the show. Also, we toured with, you know, Fit for an Autopsy and Tombs, where we were definitely not, you know, the least heavy band on the tour. I mean, I thought we were going to get eaten alive on that one, but <laughs> you know, people people were pretty open-minded and, and cool to us. I don't remember anybody uh, heckling us or talking shit or yeah, anything throwing stupid bottles like that. and everything yeah <laughs> no nothing like that yeah. maybe if we tour with like slayer or something yeah, right, that, but, right sure um no people are really cool i think that like in general like the lines between death metal and hardcore and and prog and all that kind of shit like people are a little more open-minded than they were you know 10 15 years ago where it's like you know everybody's a little into everything you know i just saw you know knock loose and animals as leaders and Ooh. fucking dance Gavin dance on the same stage like in a row <laughs> yeah, yesterday and yeah. all the kids were really stoked on every band and um and we are too you know so mm -hmm. i think that when it's it might be like catchy and poppy and rock but you know it's got some it's got some fangs to it and we're very very loud yeah and so it, you know we'll, we'll get by at metal shows and we kind of just grew up doing that like every show on long island is like not every show but a lot of them would be like death metal hardcore somewhere in between and then we'd be like the weirdo kind of stonery band. 
And I'll speak for me that sometimes when I'm at a show like that where all the bands have a similar sound and then there's one band that has a, a different or a unique sound, sometimes it's a little bit of a breath of right. fresh air. Right. It's like it's, a breather that you, you want. Yeah, it's sometimes a little bit of a break from the norm that's uh, that's exciting for me anyway. Yeah, I want to go to a show where I see, you know, different types of music. I mean, that's more, I don't know, just more interesting the whole time. It's just like Variety. if I see, I love death metal, but if I see five death metal bands in a row, I'm going to be pretty burnt on it by the end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So we, we love to do that. I mean, and we can kind of like, we fit in and don't fit in at the same time with everything we do. So we've supported Thank You Scientists, which, but yep. they're, yes, very progressive, more, I don't know. I mean, even just, you know, they were covering like Stevie Wonder and stuff and oh boy. Doing, <laughs> just, just doing stuff that was very much not, not yeah. fit for an autopsy. You know? yeah. <laughs> right. and, uh, but that tour went really well for us too. And we were kind of the, the heavy band on that tour. And I don't know. I think like, and we don't try to like curtail the, the set list to the audience or anything like that. And it's, it's just, is what it is. Not to say we don't have bad shows, but uh, <laughs> most, most of the time it's not because the, the bands we're playing with. It's just because someone's shit's not working and normal right. shit. <laughs> and uh, we do follow you on Instagram. That Swan Fest, this is my first experience or exposure to that. That looked awesome. That outside. lineup, yeah. yeah. Lineup looked killer. The outside venue looked yeah. totally awesome from the videos that you guys posted. Yeah, it was sick. I mean, uh, we kicked the whole thing off, and, and which was actually great because, you know, the side stage was right by the gate. So it's like pretty much everybody like had no choice but to <laughs> right. watch us. Yeah, to come right into you guys. That's uh, perfect. We didn't really have anybody up against us on the on the main stage, so it worked out really great. And the whole thing was awesome. I mean, Paul Troy was really sick. Covet was really sick. I mean, watching Animals and Knock Loose side stage was, you know, I got to see a lot of cool music. I think it was like 10,000 people bought tickets. And wow. It's, you know, it's Dance Gavin Dance's guitar player is Will Swan. So his, his Swan Fest is his, his oh. baby. And as, as the band is his baby. A lot of the other bands, like I think like Idola and... Royal Coda, they kind of fall under, the, you know, the dance, Gavin dance scene that they sort of created out of Sacramento. And I was glad to see that they are, uh, they decided to continue with what they were doing yeah. and they got, they got permission from everybody's family and everything. Mm -hmm. So I was glad to see that, that things didn't uh, get canceled or anything. And yeah. I'm sure you guys were as well. Yeah. So we have uh, Nick Lee from Moon Tooth with us. You got to follow them. You got to find them out on tour. And uh, I can't let you go without asking about your beer though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so Thin Man Brewery just put out a, a beer called the Phototroph IPA, which is the name of the new album coming out, Phototroph. And we just got to finally try it, actually. They mailed us some at Swan Fest, and it's, it's great. Like, even uh, if you're not an IPA guy, it's, like, pretty pretty mellow, but it's, it's delicious and gets the job done. Awesome. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, I know a guy, Mike D., who, who uh, we know from Long Island, he was at a uh, Barrier Brewing, and uh, had done a beer for us before for the last record, and I reached out to him to see if they were interested again. He said that he'd moved on to Thin Man, but that they were even more interested and would do cans, and because they had done a beer for Every Time I Die, and they did a beer for Mastodon. Oh, cool. We're still, I think they're still just kind of working out the the legal stuff on the distribution end, make sure every, all the fully legal to distribute to wherever <laughs> yeah. you want. But um, it, it's great though, and it, it should be available to to order wherever soon. I mean. We're, we're going to try to get it to some of the shows at the end of this tour, if we can. But yeah, man, it's awesome. So that's Thin Man Brewery, and it's actually got your album cover on the beer, right? Yeah, the cover that uh, the artist uh, Caroline Harrison did is uh, is on the beer can. It looks sick. Yes, it does. And I, I love the album art to where it's, you know, all colorful and pretty up above, and then, you know, the darker yeah. sepia tones or whatever underneath. It's yeah. super cool artwork that you guys have, and love that everything that you guys are doing. You have to check out the album being released May 13th. Catch them on tour with Dance Gavin Dance. Nick Lee for Moon Tooth, we appreciate you. We appreciate you calling in, man. Yes, thank you. Appreciate your time. Oh, yeah, guys. Thank you for having me.